My name is Olumide Owuru. Uh, the meaning of my name is my heir has come. Um, I am from Ogun State. I'm Ijebu. Um, that is where you can trace my ancestry um, from Ishoin. I have grown up in Lagos all of my life so far, um, in Surulere to be precise. Um, I have been opportune to spend time in Surulere around the stadium, James Robertson, Aguda. I mean, my, my best friend used to live at the end of Brown Road um, in Aguda. Um, you know, spend time around Shita, you know, Masha. I have friends in Surulere, family in Surulere. Um, and I really, really, really see myself as an integral part of what the future of Lagos, the future of Nigeria, and not just Suleri, um, could be. I decided to go into public service because this is a very um, significant period in Nigeria's democratic history. For the longest time, we've been pushing for youth inclusion and youth participation in Nigerian government. And we haven't had a better opportunity before now to really be a part of the government process in Nigeria. I represent a demographic that has innovative ideas, ideas that I think will better the government process. So that is the main reason why I'm running for public office. The honest truth is, um, I understand that my age might be equated with inexperience, at least politically. Um, and I, I do understand where you know, that, that notion might be coming from. But in terms of preparation for, for this position, I've seen things in my little journey um, in life so far that I feel have prepared me for this position, um, as well as growing up um, in Surulere. So I do have an understanding of, of the community. I do have an understanding of what the vision of the community should be. I have an understanding of the untapped potential presence in Sri Lanka, um, and, and in Lagos and in Nigeria uh, generally. Uh, so in terms of preparation, I am prepared for the office. I, I have managed projects before. I have managed tasks before. I'm a big youth uh, advocator. And I believe that, you know, with the right team around me as well, um, I can do um, a lot of positives in, in the position. I'll start with school. Um, you know, very early on in, in primary school, you know, I found myself in the, the class captain role um, a couple of times. Um, I was the assistant head boy. Uh, we call it the vice school captain at my time in King's College, Lagos, and I was in charge of administration. Also, uh, there was a time that I was the, the only young person that I could see on, on Nigerian TV um, as, a, as a young actor. So I really had to learn how to work with older people very quickly. I had to learn how to adapt. I had to learn how to have my own voice um, and not have that voice lost um, because of my age, of course. So, I've been very experienced working with teams um, from the very beginning of my career, uh, which is why I think that um, along, along the lines of that, um, I have shown that um, I can play ball when it comes to you know, working in a team and being an effective team member, and that's why I am prepared for this position. Um, if I had to pick a role model in politics, it would have to be Nelson Mandela. Um, I really admire what he stood for, um, which is change, but how he went about um, pushing the agenda of the change is really what stands out to me the most. Um, I think we need to all work with love and understanding, and I feel like dialogue makes everything easier. Because a lot of the times, if you really look at the underlying factors of a lot of issues that we're having, it's really just down to miscommunication, or people um, having the wrong notion about other people. So the easiest way um, to get past all of this, in my opinion, is dialogue. And I really do feel like the Nigerian um, government process also needs a change of mentality. Um, in the sense that if you're in public office, you are there as a servant, you're there to serve. You're a representative of the people. You're an amplifier. You are just a microphone to get the ideas of the people, the wants and needs of the people into a space where ideas, policies, 
um, whatever um, can be done to really help those people out. So I feel like we, once we understand that government is bigger than just the position or the perks or the, the, the passports that come with it or the diplomatic immunity or the escorts and all these other things, once we don't see government as a business for self-empowerment and see it more as selfless service to really get the people um, into more positive spaces, just community development, um, I think uh, the Nigerian political system will be much better for that, which is why I said I really admire um, Nelson Mandela, what he stood for. Even if you look at his entire journey, um, you could then say along certain lines he could have had reason to resort to instigating violence to get back at, at the powers that be at the time. But instead, he was the one trying to even pacify um, his supporters and trying to make them understand that we can dialogue with, with love and understanding, we can move forward together as a people. Um, I would like to think that I am very Sri uh, I have walked on a lot of the major roads in Sri Liri, um, you know, in my younger days when I had a lot of energy to burn. Um, thankfully, I grew up in a time where smartphones were not really the in thing so i had time to be outside to play to you know ride bicycles you know i used to make kites with my friends at some point we even rolled tires you know played into street matches um we used to have um we used to call it um fireworks knockouts competitions into streets um during you know festive periods so i really got to imbibe the essence of what it means to be a strawberry person and i have lived in Sri Lanka all of my life so far. Um, I've had friends there, uh, I've had relatives there, and I've an opportunity to be able to move around the different parts of Sri Lanka and really understand the demographic and the things that make up Sri Lanka. And I also have, you know, friends who um, have gone on to do amazing things that have come from Sri Lanka as well. So I do know that it is possible for people from Sri Lanka to really, you know, attain really amazing heights. My agenda for the people of Sri is very simple. Um, I want to see Sri developing at the potential that I know it possesses. Uh, so the agenda really just revolves around, you know, community building, um, building human capital, and really just trying to bring impact to Sri So things like, for example, the education, the education sector in Sri um, Not necessarily talking about building more schools, but even taking a look at the schools that are present in Sri what is the standard of education that the students are exposed to? Because I myself am somebody who is a direct benefactor of a quality education. Um, I got exposed to a lot of things um, by virtue of the schools that I went to and classmates that I had. I mean, it allowed me broaden my thinking. Um, for my secondary school, I, I went to King's College Lagos. And in Casey, we had you know, boys from around the country. So it really just gave me um, a wider outlook to what it really means to be Nigerian. Um, I really saw all these guys as my friends, as my brothers, um, irrespective of, you know, tribe. We didn't really see any differences. We really just saw all ourselves as guys with, um, you know, um, similar attributes. So I think that has helped my make out um, in terms of how I look at Nigeria. But for Suruleri, I would just like to see Suruleri develop at the potential that it has. We have people in Suruleri that could be doing amazing things with the right support, with the right exposure, and that's what I'm really hoping to bring to the table. In terms of the representation that I want to give my constituency, I think, uh, for one, it's very important for people to have positive role models in the community. Um, I would like to consider myself as a positive role model, especially for youth in Sri Lanka. So in terms of the type of representation that I would like to give Sri Lanka, I would like to give Sri Lanka a voice. Um, a voice that will be heard whenever it's necessary. Um, a voice that really is going to push for, for growth and development of the Sri Lanka area. I want um, Sri Lanka constituents to be proud of where they come from. Um, I want Sri Lanka constituents to really kickstart a change of the mentality of what it means to be a Lagosian and what it means to be a Nigerian. I feel like Sri Lanka is at the heart of Lagos 
Um, and because it is at the heart of Lagos, I think Sule can be at the heart of the change that we want in Lagos. I feel like people can look to Sule and take cues from the structures that we are going to put in place in order to develop other areas as well. So these are the ways that um, I plan to you know, represent Sule at the State House of Assembly. I think for the first time in a long time, we actually have a leader that is worth emulating. Um, even beyond just the skills that he possesses as a leader, even beyond his, his track record of the amazing things he did as an Amber State Governor, even his track record before he was um, State Governor, he really is somebody that comes off as down to earth, very simple, approachable. Somebody that really cares about what you're going through. Um, and that is one of the things that you want in a leader. You want a leader that you feel cares about your position, a leader that you feel or you know is thinking about you in whatever decisions that they're making. Um, Peter B is one of the reasons why I even decided to even be politically active on this level in terms of running for office. Um, he's somebody that I know I can learn a lot from. He's somebody that I'm hoping that I can work with um, in whatever capacity. Just because even outside of just politics, he is somebody that you feel like you can sit down with and have a conversation and ask questions. How was it when you were growing up, sir? How did you start your first business? How did you feel when you made your first million? Um, sir, I want to be a leader. What are the things you, need to, you think I need to work on? Um, I'm having difficulties here, sir. What do you think you can do to help me out? He really feels like an uncle, you know, or, or a dad. And I feel like that also helps to demystify, you know, what it means to be, to be a leader. So by all ramifications, Peter OB is definitely um, an exemplary leader. I'm hoping that we have more leaders like him that emerge and I'm really positive that a lot of people in my generation, in my age bracket, in my demographic will draw a lot of inspiration from His Excellency Peter Obi and will really want to do amazing things in whatever capacity they can moving forward for the country. Even before interacting with GRV, um, I think the first um, opinion that I, I formed about him is he's a really intelligent guy. Um, he, he's very well put together and he articulates his, his thoughts um, very smoothly, very direct. Um, he doesn't really beat about um, the bush. He really just tells you what it is that he feels needs to be corrected and how he's going to correct it. And, you know, by spending, you know, time with him, you know, by virtue of also running under the umbrella of the the Labour Party, um, I really got to understand that uh, he really just wants change for Lagos because he as well um, understands that Lagos has so much potential. Lagos should be doing so much better than it is um, in all areas. Uh, so I think, you know, even the plans that he has for Lagos um, in terms of really trying to establish a transparent government, an, an inclusive government, and a government that is really focused on developing the state. Um, that is something that I really admire um, and I look forward to working with him to make this dream a reality. So the thing that I like the most about the presidential elections on the 25th is the turnout. Um, when I say turnout, I mean the turnout of voters. Um, for the first time in Nigeria's democratic history, I dare say this is the highest turnout we've had, especially for the youth demographic. Um, and it's very gladdening to see that we now are waking up and want to be a part of our future because whatever policies are being put in place now are going to affect us directly and really will determine you know, the course of the future of Nigeria. I think we are at a very important crossroads now where we are deciding if this country is going to get better or if this country is going to get worse. So the turnout on election day really just shows that it is no longer business as usual. People are now going to start asking questions. Leaders are now going to have to be more transparent, more accountable, because we will be part of the process. We will be asking questions. We will be shining a spotlight 
on what you're doing and you have to really let us know if you really want to be the type of leader that we want or not that's one side um unfortunately um we were sold a dream by INEC and this dream was that it was going to be a free and fair election with the inclusion of Beavers. Um, we were told that results would be uploaded at the polling units. So as far as everybody was concerned, if we come out, we stay there, make sure the voting process is smooth, votes are counted, whatever number we reach, everybody can see that is the result, upload and we know who the people want to be their leader. Unfortunately, that is not what happened. Um, I personally feel like Nigerians have been robbed because I don't think um, the opinions of the, the citizens is being respected. At the end of the day, the government is of the people, for the people, by the people. So if the people say that they want somebody as their leader, the people should be listened to. So I'm really hoping that it is something that can be sorted out because I feel like there is sufficient evidence to prove that um, the Labour Party did win the presidential elections. And I'm hoping that at the end of the day, democracy does prevail and that will really set Nigeria on course to really be the giants that we have the potential to be. So in terms of the, the plans that I have for, for miscreants or touts, um, first I would say I don't even like to describe them as that. Um, I like to describe them as victims of circumstance. And I say this because I've been opportune to interact with some of the individuals in in that situation in that predicament a couple of times and you realize that they have hopes and dreams and aspirations as well um a lot of them really are exposed to that line because of experiences you know maybe from their background or from their environment so i think we need to address this from the very beginning um what are the things that we can do to help an individual from the start of their lives so that they do not feel like they need to go on that path to survive. So in creating a better education system, in creating um, better development for their communities in terms of amenities being available, opportunities being made available to them, even outside of an academic setting. Um, these are some of the things that can help um, from the beginning to make sure that they do not get to um, that that line in terms of them feeling they need that to survive. Now that is um, us nipping that in the bud, helping out from the beginning. But there's some individuals that are already in that situation. So what do we do? It's very simple. As I said, we need to start creating positive role models. So we need to interact with them as human beings, as people that still have potential. But more importantly, you need to give them something to do. Because more often than not, um, because they are um, not as busy, maybe you could even say idle, um, certain powers that be take advantage of that and use that um, need or that desperation, use that energy and turn these people um, into weapons, you know, into machinery and use them to carry out um, some activities that don't really sit well in society so we need to first even break down the power structure in lagos look at how lagos is run understanding that a lot of these guys are not in this position by accident the system that is currently being run in lagos needs these guys to keep the system running so first of all we need to change the way the nigerian government system is the lagos government system is make it um more inclusive more open more transparent what are the plans that this government has? Where are all these monies going? Um, also, the level of tax that you're even introducing, where is the money for that tax going? Does the tax need to be that high? Um, and if it does need to be that high, involve people in the process. Um, so basically, we need to increase the, you know, the human capital. We need to give them jobs. We need to give them trainings, things that they can do to keep themselves busy, expose their minds. Because again, this thing is mental. We also need to attack not just the financial aspect, but also their mental, how they, their outlook to life, how they view themselves. Um, do they even see themselves as being important to the system or do they just see themselves as, you know, useless? If, if anything happens to me, nobody's going to notice. So as, as we're attacking, um, you know, the commercial side of things, the policy side of things, we also need to put um, 
um, plans in place that also help with their mental, with their outlook. Um, we need to do a serious rehabilitation on how they see themselves and how they see their environment. But I do feel like there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of things we can do, um, even outside of, you know, um, sending them to school or creating jobs. There's so many things that we can create for them, vocational trainings, um, even in the entertainment industry, which is one of the highest employers of labor now. Um, there are so many opportunities, even in that industry, for um, not necessarily academic qualifications, um, skill sets that they can pick up with the right training and with the right exposure levels. So I don't think that um, the victims of circumstance should be written off. Um, I do not think it is late for them. I do think they need a chance. Um, it is not going to be easy. It is going to be very difficult as a lot of these things have been embedded in the DNA of, of these individuals. But I do think that, you know, with love, with support, with dialogue, um, it is possible to turn their lives around and turn the lives of, of Lagosians around generally. I plan to be very, very accessible. As I said, I want to bring the government to the people because at the end of the day, it is their ideas that I will need to figure out the best ways to push in the house in order for us to get the results that we want as a collective in the Surulere community. So that is not going to happen if I'm far away from the heartbeat of the people, what's going on. So the plan is to be as close to the people. I want to be able to even be taking walks around Surulere randomly, have meetings set up periodically in terms of updates, um, if there's any complaints, any things that we want to do, you know, set up an office even that, you know, people can go to, um, even without seeing me physically, you know, go to table your complaints, you know, table your needs. Um, and then we will, we will address that, whatever we can do, even outside of pushing bills in the house. You know, there's certain things that we can do as constituency projects to really ease um, some of the pressures um, in the community. Um, are the things that you know I'm looking to do. So social media, um, having an, a number that you can call, you know, emails, writing physical letters, setting up the meetings periodically in the different words in the constituency. These are some of the ways that I want to um, implement being accessible. Um, the whole point of this entire process is for people to be able to reach out see their representative because all I'm doing is representing these people. It is nothing more than that. So if they cannot see me, what is the point of being a representative? Um, who are you representing? What message are you sending? What am I even sure that the people want if I'm far from the people? So the plan is to bring it down to the grassroots level, uh, which is where I think the change is going to come from. I think the change that Nigeria needs really is from bottom to top. Uh, so I plan to be as accessible as possible physically in terms of setting up periodic meetings on social media, having an office that people can come to, just catching me in Surulere, you know, taking a walk or taking a jog or something. I really want this process to be inclusive. I want people to feel a part of the change that they want to see in Surulere. And at the end of the day, um, it's an exchange of ideas. I don't have all the ideas. I don't have all the answers. Um, there are things that I'm even going to need to learn on the go and that's fine because I'm open to learning. I'm open to open to asking questions. Um, this is a together process. Um, it cannot be done one party or the other. It cannot be done by myself alone. It cannot be done by the people alone. But I feel like if we work together, we could really be starting something historic in terms of just changing um, the way political leaders are seen, representatives are seen, making it more of a service industry. Um, because again, all my time is really just going to make sure that the people of Surulere are comfortable and they get the change and development that they want. My name is Olumide Uwuru. I am the Labour Party candidate for the Lagos State House of Assembly, Surulere Constituency 1. I would like to urge you to come out to exercise your civic rights as a citizen of our great country, Nigeria, and as a member of the Surulere constituency. Please vote for me as your representative in the Lagos State House of Assembly, Surulere 1 constituency, and I promise to be an exemplary leader and the type of leader with the innovative ideas that we need to take Surulere from where it is to where it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you.